does divide mean like divide or does divide mean like divide? We're just being silly little gooses. Hello guys, and welcome to episode two of Battle of the Recipes. You guys loved episode one of this new series, and I had so much fun making it. In case you guys missed episode one, go check it out. It ended up being Hailey Bieber versus Selena Gomez. My heart, I still feel badly for pitting two women against each other, and I hope it's not happening again today. But the premise of the show is I'm given two blind recipes from two chefs, celebrities, influencers, grandmas, people, I'm not sure. I make both blindly, and then at the end, I'm gonna taste them both, tell you whose is better, and we're gonna find out who won. We are judging today on how easy was it to make, how does it look, and most importantly, how does it taste? So one of them is a little bit more complex, okay. and the other was literally a transcription that a blogger wrote out because she was on the phone with the chef, and she told her, oh, they told he... her, sorry, they told Not her. pitting women against each other again. <laughs> the man loses. This is the first. Okay. She laminated it, guys. So today on the menu, we have burgers, one of my favorite foods ever. I'm quite the burger connoisseur, so this is going to be easy peasy. So the first recipe, oh, it only makes two burgers. That's perfect if you live with one other person, you want to make lunch, or you just like two burgers, because sometimes we need two burgers. Right off the bat, this recipe was easy to find online, so you get points for that, but let's get cooking. One pound of ground beef, one egg, we got our bun, cheddar cheese, our tomato, onion, ooh, yum. This is like my go-to burger recipe. I am seeing mustard, though. I don't like mustard on my burgers. Lettuce leaves, interesting and instead of iceberg, which already points for that. I am starting to like iceberg more, but I still always will like a regular lettuce leaf. We got mayo, we got Dijon, and butter to butter the buns. First up, we've got our ground beef. I'm gonna put a pound of ground beef into this large bowl. We're gonna use a large spoon to break it up and mix in the eggs. Points off, ingredients says one egg. Directions say mix in the eggs and- Sorry. That was my fault. Oh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I was gonna dock some points. This is to make two, but the original recipe was to make four. Oh. So I was trying to like save. You get your points, grandma. Fired. Well, never mind then. Single egg going into the bowl. Ooh, what a beautiful egg that was. Right off the bat, the spoon isn't working for me. Also, why is there no seasoning in this mixture or in the recipe? Already off the bat, not doing so well. Also, the spoon doesn't really allow for the meat to like mix up with the egg. The reason for the egg is it's going to bind the meat together. So when we flatten it out, it should stick. To be fully honest though, I don't think eggs normally go in burgers. When I make burgers, it sticks together fine. Like if you're making a meatloaf or like, you know, something compact you wanna use, eggs or meatballs, burger, not, Quite, as far as I know. What the burger lacks in seasoning, we make up for an egg. Divide the ground beef, roll into ball, flatten into patty, and place onto a parchment paper. All right, half pound burgers. I feel like the biggest I see at a restaurant is like a third. That is big. It's a lot of meat. So I'm gonna follow the directions in numerical order and complete each step. I already accidentally read a little bit ahead and I don't know why they didn't put this one earlier. So, I mean, I'm gonna do it. If I were writing the recipe, I would do something different. Just saying. I'm gonna take half my beef. Oh my God. I feel like this has to be like a large man's recipe because that is a small meatloaf. I'm just saying. Divide the ground beef, roll up into section, and flatten into a patty and place on parchment. Okay, granted, ground beef shrinks when you cook it, but look, this is still a monstrosity. Divide the cheese and then press it into the middle of the patty. Work the meat to, oh, they're cheese covered. I don't like that idea, but I'm gonna do it. We've got two slices of cheddar cheese. The directions aren't great to be fully honest. Divide the cheese, press it into the middle. So do I just take the whole slice? Does divide mean like divide? Or does divide mean like divide? That does. Div a squared plus B squared equals C squared. I'm gonna go with divide the cheese. I'm gonna go with that. Okay, I'm gonna press this in the middle. Ah, no, wait, I'm gonna divide the cheese and I'm gonna put this in the middle. Okay, that might fit a little better now. Was that right? Yeah. That was right! Okay, divide the cheese. You can use slices or you can use like chunks of cheese. Ooh, that's fun. Work the meat to cover the cheese. All right, we're gonna work the meat. Let me put my gloves back on. See, what I was saying is you should have had the cheese already out and divided and split so you don't have to take your gloves off, touch the cheese, put the gloves back on. I'm so curious who this person is. Who would put cheese on the inside of their burgers. This is like giving state fair. Okay, while well, I fold my burger over my cheese, I'm gonna guess who I think this is. I wanna believe we did celebrities last time, so I think it's gonna be like a chef, like a Food Network person this time. And it's Guy Fieri! It's gotta be Guy Fieri! 
if he's putting cheese in his burgers. Actually, he does reside in Flavortown, USA, so he would put seasoning on his burgers. Maybe it's like a Bobby play. Sorry, Bobby. All right, wait, that's kind of pretty. <laughs> These are the biggest burgers I've ever seen in my life. Now we place these in the fridge and let them cool for 30 minutes. Okay, while the meat rests, I'm going to begin recipe number two. Now I was told that this one was actually not found on a website and the way that we got this was a blogger called a chef and got these instructions over the phone and wrote them down for us. So already for easiness, points are knocked off, but I'm liking what I'm seeing here with the ingredients. So we've got a pound of ground beef. We've got American cheese, which to me, this plastic cheese is the superior cheese for a burger. I know, I'm sorry, but I love it. We've got the same brioche bun. Cal decided to eat one of our props for his lunch today to make a sandwich, so we're left with this iceberg lettuce. We are going to use tomato, onion, and pickles are optional, and I love me a bread and butter pickle. I have eaten this entire half jar by myself already. So let's get cooking. Okay, from the chef. There's very little prep. All you have to do- Well, well they really like quoted this person. Okay, you know, if it were me, I would like interpret it, but no, we've got- There's very little prep. All you have to do is get the veggies ready. It's important to shred the lettuce. Oh, a shred of a lettuce. Slice your tomato and cut those white onions so thin they only have one side. Who would say that about onions? Someone on Food Network would say that. I feel like someone on Food Network I've watched has said that. I'm really hoping it's Alton Brown because I love him. He didn't specify how thick to cut our tomatoes, so I'm gonna go a little thicker because I love a thick tomato. Personally, for me, when I do burgers, I like to like lay all of my things out on a plate. I don't know about you, but I'm gonna do that. Okay, lettuce, so we're doing a shredded iceberg. I mean, normally when you think of like an In-N-Out burger or something, you know, you've got a whole like chunk of leaves, but he shreds and shredded iceberg reminds me of school cafeteria food, but that's just me. Or maybe Taco Bell. We're gonna do a fine shred. So this person calls for thin, thin onions. Only have one side. Okay, those are pretty paper thin, I will say. You can only see one side. Now I will say you could use a mandolin and that would be easier, but we're gonna use our knife here. I also personally am a fan of avocado on my burgers. Neither of these people want them, so that's okay. Step number two, butter the buns and pop them into the oven to get nice and toasty. Uh, wish I had preheated the oven perhaps. How long, what temperature. Also, I usually just like butter my buns and put them on the stove, but- Yeah, you do. Thank you. I guess I'm just gonna wing it. Here, let's try. When you don't know, I go for 350. All right, we are making two burgers. So we're gonna butter our buns. It didn't specify, you know, which sides or if only one side, but I'm gonna butter all four and we've got some butter that has come to room temperature. So it's nice and malleable. I want to shove this in my <laughs> mouth. It smells so good. This butter is not soft enough yet. Just rub your hands together. Make it really hot. Yeah, hold the butter. Oh. Let me just pop this in the microwave for like six seconds. That should be good. Six? Why not seven? Okay, I'll do seven. But if it's melted, it's your fault. Okay. Ollie, it's melted. You should have done 350. <laughs> oh, it's actually perfect. Okay. Who's a chef now, bitch? Ooh, 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 that looks sure damn good. Can I see you butter the buns? You can see me butter my bun. You want to make sure to get to all the little edges and the nooks and crannies. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That was about four tablespoons of butter for two buns, but they didn't tell me, so. Well, our oven is going to take a long time to preheat, so I'm just going to put these back here. Shout out to the blogger for making horrible instructions. For the patty, season, thank God, with salt and pepper, and shape into balls. One pound, these are also half pound burgers? What the f Here's the thing, okay, I think a half pound could be normal. I think I'm just being dramatic. Yeah, like a is quarter it, pounder. A half pound is two quarter pounders put together. It sounds amazing. Are you getting a double quarter pounder at McDonald's? Perhaps. <laughs> For me personally, I make four patties out of a pound, but maybe I'm not making my patties correctly. Here's the thing, I don't know what Food Network chef or real chef would use American cheese. American cheese is very frowned upon. I don't know why. And it sounds like this guy's a hard guy to get a hold of considering it's a phone call. Once patties are ready, oh, we're making a smash burger. Shape and balls. Once patties are ready, smash on a griddle with a spatula. It's essential to cook burgers on the hottest griddle or cast iron pan you can get. You smash it down hard. We're talking a half inch thick. This is going to be a massive patty. All right, see, this is what I'm talking about. You wanna get your fingers all up in there, mix it around. See what I'm saying? Eggs don't go in a burger patty. We're not making meatballs here. And also usually when you're putting an egg to bind, you're also throwing in like breadcrumbs or something else. Just Pure protein, sounds like a gym bro. We've got about two big balls here. Then we're gonna smash them down. 
and make them really thin. I actually almost just bought myself a smash burger like smasher the other day and I didn't and now I'm regretting it. I mean, he said use a spatula though actually, so that's okay. I will say they didn't specify like anything on the pan, butter, oil, just dry. I'm gonna do it because I don't want to have my burger stick, but that's just me. Drizzling of the oil and then we take a spatula and we go, and he goes, this is not gonna fit on a bun. It says to wait till the edges get crispy. So that's what I'm waiting for. And then we flip. Looking crispy. Oh, yeah. Flipper. Absolutely delicious, brother. <laughs> After we flip, oh, add a slice of cheese. The chef loves using American cheese slices on burgers because they melt really well. Agreed. We're gonna put this on and then we're gonna cover it and let it melt. I dare you to eat a pickle. Oh. Oh my bun. All right guys, the buns were taking too long. I'm calling, you know what? They're getting toasty on the outside. The actual like buns are not really browning up, but it's fine, it's a bun. It's gonna taste good. To construct the burger, place the patty on the bottom of the bun. I do not agree with this. I feel like you should put something down so that the burger juices don't go into the bun and make it soggy. Then he said, add the tomato, add the onion slices, then go on with the pickles, which don't the pickles go on the bun? And then he said, lettuce on top of that, which makes zero sense. Bun on top of that. Boom, that looks pretty good. I will say there are no condiments. Where's the mayo? Where's the ketchup? All right, time for our taste test. Before then though, we need to do a couple ratings. First off, how easy was this recipe to follow? Out of 10, I'm gonna give this a two. I mean, it wasn't that easy to follow. There were pretty much no directions and we had to write them down. So two on that, but looks, I'm gonna give it, that's a pretty beautiful burger. The patties look great. I'm gonna give it like an eight and a half on looks. I am missing like some condiments. I would love to see like a little sauce dripping down, but you know, I'll take what I can get and I am excited to try. So let's do our taste test. Obviously I have to get a bite of everything. Ooh, it's juicy and big. Here I go. It's good, but I only got meat. I gotta go again. I mean, it's good, but it's missing sauce. I'm getting most of the flavor from the pickles and those were optional. I'm gonna give it a seven. No, six and a half. It needs some like more acidity. It needs some ketchup. It needs, I would even take mustard on this right now. It just needs a little more. It tastes very meat forward. I mean, it's still pretty good. Let's finish the other recipe. Our meat has rest for 30 minutes. Oh my God, there are so many steps on this one. Now we're gonna slice our onion and tomato into thick slices and then mix the mayonnaise and Dijon together in a small bowl. At least there's sauce on this one. I already have some leftover tomato from the other one, but this one says thick slices of onion to go with the thick slices of tomato, so gorgeous. And we're prepped. I'm just saying, I know my burger recipe is better than this already. Both of these, and I don't know who these are, so. Okay, we're gonna do half a cup of mayonnaise for two burgers? We're gonna put a quarter cup of mayonnaise on one burger? Fire times two. Good thing I asked. Quarter cup of mayonnaise. Still a bit too much if you ask me, but better than a half cup. And one tablespoon of Dijon. I mean, that looks delicious, but that's a lot of sauce. Now, turn the pan on high, remove the patties from the fridge, allow it to come to room temperature. Make sure the grill, oh, so these are grill burgers. I don't know how to grill. I've never touched a grill, so I'm gonna make them here in the house. Make sure it gets hot though. Drizzle olive oil and sprinkle with salt and pepper. Thank God. Little drizzle, drizzle, drizzle. Salt, pepper, flip and a flip. Same thing again. Cook for four minutes before flipping. While the burgers are cooking, season the thickly sliced onion with olive oil, salt, pepper, and then put them on here as well. It's Mickey Mouse! So it says to prep the buns instead of butter. For this one, we're doing olive oil. So I'm just gonna do a little oil on the buns. These are gonna get nice and toasty. Oil, and then they salt it. There's a lot of layering of salt here, which is good. I'm hoping it's not gonna be too salty. Salt and pepper. And when the patties are done, we throw these onto the grill too. And I like that I don't have to add cheese onto the patty because it's already inside. This one's a little hard to cook because it's so thick. We gotta wait. That cheese. That marbleization. Time to assemble. Sorry, there's a lot going on. There's a lot of smoke in this house. The burger patties are cooking behind me, but we've got our buns here. Add a spoonful of the mayo mustard mixture to the top and bottom bun. I like the sauciness going on here, I will say. I like the lubrication that we've got going. All right, we've got the lettuce that's going on the top, it said. We're gonna do two. Next is a tomato. Salt and pepper on the tomato. Yes, you should always salt your tomatoes, but this just feels like a lot of salt. Another spoonful of the mustard mixture. Just before your burgers are ready, baste them with butter. What? 
This just feels excessive. I'm gonna top the bun with my patty, some grilled onions, and then top it off. And there she is. All right, guys, let's try our rubric. So based on easiness of the recipe, it was easy to follow, but there were a lot of unnecessary steps. So based on that, I'm gonna give it a seven. It looks good. I personally am a smash burger fan over like a thick patty fan. So based on that, I'm gonna give this a six and a half. But I am intrigued by the cheese and the patty, so let's slice in. <gasps> I change it from, what did I give it? I give this a nine. That is beautiful. All right, let's do the taste test. That is one of the best burgers I've ever had in my life. Period. Holy shit. The cheese that has oozed out of the patty has gotten crunchy on the outside. The Dijon really adds some nice tang, I have to say. I'm not a yellow mustard fan, but like this is good. I'm gonna start doing that. The grilled onions add nice sweetness. It's really good. Remember when you were hating on this recipe? I'm sorry, I take it back. I give this on taste a nine and a half. Like someone come get in here right now. Some burgers on the floor? Holy yeah. shit. Wow. Try that last one. It is salty, but it's so good. So good. They're giving five star restaurant. The smash burger got a final rating, 17. Ooh, that's not good. Of 30. More gourmet, thick boy, uh -huh. got 25.5. Wow, that's our highest score yet. Here I go. The smash burger. <gasps> Stop, Guy Fieri! And the other is Gordon Ramsay. I feel like he would make that many unnecessary steps, but they ended up being necessary because that was delicious. Well guys, that was so much fun. I had the best time doing this today. I mean, each man obviously has, you know, their specialties. They're both fabulous chefs within themselves, but I feel like this just like, this is them as people, am I right? Let me know what you guys wanna see on future episodes of Battle of the Recipes, and I will see you guys next time. Bye!